et in Arcadia Ego. This is uh, an artwork that uh, creates an artificial environment where the words are programmed with uh, very simple instructions. The inspiration for this piece begins with the idea of where life itself comes from. If life uh, began, as it is suggested, as evolved through evolution, first starting with uh, very simple single cellular organisms and proto-DNA, given enough time, this uh, becomes um, other more complicated creatures. So my, my idea with this artwork is that these words will um, who, who are bumping into each other and uh, multiplying and eating the little dots that you can see around you. If the exhibition lasts 30 million years, then uh, a sentient society that exists on the two-dimensional surface of the walls will appear. The duration of this artwork is, is infinite. It's constantly changing. It's not a video loop. It's... Uh, it um, has been created by myself using computer code that I've written in C uh, and C++ language. It's like being in a fish tank, and in a way, the the visitor to the artwork uh, becomes themselves like a, a word moving around this space. When we move uh, through this artwork, and you come round the corner into the second room. The first thing you probably notice are these two large uh, screens in portrait orientation. Their work is called Male and Female, and uh, it was created uh, this year, 2020. And the starting point for this artwork was uh, when I was in New York last year visiting the Smithsonian and uh, the Getty Museums. I was very struck by the um, Roman and Greek uh, fragments of figures and faces. I looked a long time and took many pictures and notes and drawings from the, the fragments and I tried to imagine these faces belong to living people once upon a time and uh, history and uh, has, has wiped and broken and cracked and decayed these faces. So what I thought I'd do is I created my own software uh, which is very similar to, the, to what forensic uh, scientists use to when they find some uh, human remains and need to reconstruct uh, a possible representation of a person who's been missing or whose body has uh, decomposed. I applied these um, algorithms to the figures, the, the fragments that I found, in a way to somehow bring them back to life. And uh, the computer is constantly where the, an arm has been broken off or a face has been split by time or water or the elements. The computer program attempts to uh, reconstruct the, the individual's uh, features. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and it's in a constant sort of uh, uh, a constant, uh, how do you say, like wave-like movement between representation and uh, collapse. Another sort of feeling, another thought I had behind this was uh, from the painter uh, Cranach the Elder and his representations of Adam and Eve. So. In a way, I kind of like the idea that uh, identity is constantly both sexuality and gender and, and uh, you know, binary universes collapse uh, back down onto themselves continually. In the same room, you will find a large globe circle disc uh, covered with words good and evil and yes and no. This piece is from 2018 and uh, quite typical to some of my my artworks are setting up kind of binary uh, conflicts. In this case the word good is trying to destroy the word evil and yes is trying to destroy no and vice versa. And you'll see how they flow and move and try to occupy territory, and that naturally pushes them into conflict. So it's not, uh, and the globe shape, the circle shape, isn't uh, coincidental. I I try to 
suggest that it's like a, a world, but it could also be like a, a petri dish in a laboratory when the scientists, biologists use uh, microbiologists create cultures and bacterias. I always like the idea that William Burroughs uh, suggested that language was a virus from outer space. So this work will continually play out like a battle. Uh, sometimes good will win, sometimes evil will, will win, and then it restarts. And each time one side uh, is successful, the computer keeps a, a kind of like a score. It has a scorecard. And I imagine after 500 years, it would be interesting to see who won the most. Is it going to be more typical that good wins, or is it going to be more typical that uh, evil wins? And perhaps the... Uh, the result will uh, give us a clue about, uh, you know, the true morality of the world. In uh, the third room, woman in a blue dress. It's 2020, and I, I know who the woman is. She's my wife. Her mother had uh, recently died, and when we were clearing her mother's uh, personal effects, my wife found a large collection of unused wool. My wife's mother and my wife come from quite a poor background and, you know, every everything is precious when you see something, um, you know, unused or, or, or left behind, they, they, they collect them. And so my uh, wife sat down and started to uh, knit and, and crochet with this material and I think it was her way of memorializing or processing the grief of losing her mother. So I took images, kind of like a, how they use um, facial recognition in security systems. Instead, I got the, the computer to uh, analyze the, the movement of the, the hands knitting, and it's almost like the body itself is trying to knit itself back together, and at the same time, it, the body is unraveling itself. I see the computer program is making this constant process of renegotiation of a visual image. The next work in, in the third room is called Origins 2 and uh, dates to 2018. What we see here is uh, in some way similar to the first room, Et in Arcadia Ego, except in this case the words are more confined. You, instead of having the, the freedom to move around a, a large space, they're trapped between two uh, long uh, walls, the ceiling and the floor. Uh, I got the inspiration for this artwork from looking out of my studio window and seeing the small birds all trying to land on the telegraph wire at the same time. Uh, of course, there's not enough space for all of them, so some of them are pushed off and have to fly away again. There are actually two specific texts here. The first text is from the uh, origin, the Genesis, the first part of the Bible. And the second text, uh, it's called, um, by Charles Darwin, it's uh, on, on the origin of the species. The two texts are kind of competing to occupy the same space, and that constantly puts them into conflict. Sometimes fragments of the Bible uh, will appear, Genesis will appear, and sometimes fragments, uh, sentences of uh, Darwin will emerge. Um, uh, there's not enough space to fit both texts, so they somehow they have to kind of re-edit themselves. So the process uh, is sometimes interrupted because I've programmed a, a kind of virtual blast of wind which disturbs all of the word birds and forces them to uh, flee and then return, uh, attempt to return again. The last work you'll see, uh, if you step outside in the evening, projected on the stone wall of the garden of the, the gallery, is a piece called Covered by Forest. Um, during the time of COVID um, and lockdown, I decided to uh, go to the safest place possible I could think of, which is, which is the Finnish forest. Uh, I have great access to that. So I got myself a sort of a portable video projector and, uh, and my portable computers and I, I spent weeks wandering around the forest uh, making projections of, uh, of forgotten faces. There's a, a sort of a kind of a mythology in Finland that says that sometimes people, even though they're very familiar with a certain part of forest, it might be their, their home, home forest, they suddenly become uh, frozen or... or 
uh, trapped. Usually they, they, they don't move and uh, they uh, become uh, invisible to uh, anybody who, who passes by. And the phenomenon is called covered by forest. And uh, there are uh, some special tricks that you have to use if you find yourself trapped in this, this position. And uh, the artwork in the garden is a kind of teaching people, uh, if you watch it carefully, it will give you some of the techniques that you will have to use to escape the, the entrapment. Entrapment, I don't know if it's a curse, is too strong a word, but uh, for me the forest can also be the city, the, it can be the environment in general, and I suspect it's uh, the phenomenon of being covered by forest is really about how we have to negotiate our position in the environment and not be, uh, not uh, not to um, become frozen.